which also means that Leia's leadership is terrible. This guy. This guy. You see, where, where are you running? How'd you have a guy on the inside? How are you surprised? They just walk right past each other. Because there's some backblast here that should be taking these people out. <laughs> the First Order is like clearly evil. They're super fascist, super bad. But look at this parade formation. The New Republic lies to the Damn. galaxy. Look how good this that is. This machine which you have built will bring an end to the Senate, to their cherished Oh, so good. And will so good. remember this, the last day of the Republic. <laughs> Even the about face. Yep. All in sync. Boom. The trees. Like they're super evil, super bad, awesome. Like, like I get it, super bad. But look at this parade formation. So disciplined. So disciplined. So organized. They've got the Tie Fighters like lined in up photo op spots. Like look yeah, at that. Look at this all lined up. Ooh, so nice. Every pilot had to land this perfectly. And they built like this evil, like bad, parade like for sure. For sure. Evil, terrible, evil, terrible. evil, bad. Terrible. But like, they, look how look how much they care. I mean, like they're like lined okay. up so good. Why is the dark side ever present in the Star Wars universe? Well, the light side kind of lends itself to some chaos. Like if I want my yeah. sewers working, if I want my water on, if I want power, yeah. and this is the kind of organization I see from the dark side. Well, maybe sometimes I have some sympathy because right. when the re the rebels come in, everything's falling apart. That's right. I mean, if I, yeah, if I, I don't, maybe I don't want the first order to like control me, like I take away all my freedoms, but like their organizational skills, like I bet they don't have toilet problems. Like it runs, it, work, it works every time. Like they don't, there's no clogging. There's no like, like, like leaking tank. Like it's dialed in. I mean, yeah, if I'm, if I'm on the outskirts of the galaxy and I don't have these, I don't have running water, I don't have power, I don't have a good house. And the first order rolls in, and the first thing they do is everything is organized, and I'm living a better life. Building roads, maybe, building homes, maybe, building schools. Maybe I'm not seeing the tyranny yet, but I'm very yeah. sympathetic, and I see the tyranny later. I can see yeah. why I would yeah. want, why would they would become more powerful because I get I get nice things. Right on the surface, if you don't get get to the tyranny part, then yeah, they bring prosperity around. And yeah, just this. This is representative of that kind of competence. I mean, the TIE Fighters and the formations and the flags mm -hmm. and the terrain mm -hmm. and like the cool guns. It's just mm -hmm. all dialed in. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and it's like in the heart of every individual person because it's up to each person to make sure that they're like lined up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they mm -hmm. do it. They're terrible. They're terrible. They're super, super, evil. super evil. Super, super, super evil. evil. Super evil. Super evil. But also, I get it. Okay, so looking at that blast, I don't think this is not a moon. I, I don't think this is a moon. I think this is an entire planet that this star killer base. Mm -hmm. It's because they're trees. They're trees, yeah. Oh, and man, so atmosphere powerful. and mountain. But this is like a whole. This is gigantic. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely oh, gigantic. So so cool. Mm. Oof. Plus, they've coordinated it in space. That's right. Okay, so, so, so this is what made me think that this is not a moon. This is a planet because mm -hmm. that is trees. Like, yeah. like if you had a space station, why would there be trees? Well, I guess it could be like a halo situation where they built a ring and they put trees on it for ecological purposes, I guess. Which something. means the First Order cares about ecological reasons. <laughs> yeah. Are, are, are they evil? <laughs> That's right. They're taking care of the, the ecology of the planet. Mm-hmm. In fact, the, the weapon is so dialed in that when it fires, the trees that are fairly close to the muzzle of the mm -hmm, weapon mm -hmm. are just getting a light push. They're yeah, not they actually getting obliterated. Right. It's not like that impact crater in Russia where all, like, all the trees are gone, right? Yeah, right. Like, no, they're, they're pretty okay. But this is what the thing that bothered me about that is that if this is an entire planet and they mm -hmm. hollowed out the inside on this scale to build a base, like, yeah. That's a lot of mass just to just just to move, just to excavate. Like just just build in a space then. Just just build a space station. So yeah, so they've got to oh gosh, the technical expertise to hollow out a planet is without so, it collapsing on itself? Like it would collapse on itself. So you need these like structures holding the gravity back as yep. you're building. And then I assume that they hollow it out because they need a chamber to hold the star. 
So it's going to go from gravity collapse to outward pressure. And so so like, it's wow. it's not so my understanding is not a star inside the planet. There's like a star nearby that they harvest energy from, right? But it doesn't it doesn't that star get temporarily stored somewhere inside the planet before it just, fires? Just, just it, do that outside. Just do that in space. Like why but, why do it inside a planet? I, I 100% agree, but they but when they they like suck up the star and put it in the planet, yeah. right? Sure. Sure. So it's got to be stored in the planet. Oh, you're saying you're okay. You're saying about the technology, the technological, yeah, yeah. Uh, impressive. I don't know the, the ability. The ability to do it all is impressive. It's just absolutely, super impressive. Absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. So, but you're also saying like, why? It seems overly complex. Yeah. Why harvest out a planet? Because like this is this is a, okay. Look, this is the size of a planet, and this is how much of their machine is at least mm -hmm. visible to us right now. Like yeah. that's a that's an enormous amount of mass just to remove and ship out yeah. to space or somewhere, right? Like, yeah. just, just build a space station. So I guess the explanation has to be that the engineering is so competent that this isn't that challenging for you, for them. They're not like right on the edge of engineering competence. They're like, sure, sure. this is, we could do it this easier way, but we can do it the harder way because it's not a big deal for us. I mean, I guess for them, somehow this is the preferable way. Which means this is, we're talking engineering through the roof. I mean, through the roof. Through the roof. Down the ground. Both of them. Because you could think of it simple, simpler ways to, in, to create yep. this. Yep. It's uh, just, However, just style points. You don't want to do the same Death Star. Death Star built in space. Death Stars do built in space. This thing inside a planet. Inside a planet. Expect that. And if you actually look at the planet, they hollowed it out, built this huge canyon in it for the weapon, but mm. did not ruin the ecology. There's actually That's still true. oceans and. Well, and in, forests in fact, and they must water. have taken care of the ecology because this this would destabilize stuff. Yeah. So as it's being built, they're keeping the ecology and the surface of the planet intact. Yeah. yeah. Man. I mean, that takes a lot of care. Is the I'm speechless. Evil? It's just incredible. Are, are, are they, they evil? evil? Are they? <laughs> so in this episode, there are some questions that are never answered, and this is one of them. Let's watch. Where'd you get that? A good question for another time. So okay. it's good. Where did Maz cannot get the lightsaber of Luke? It, they say, good question for their time, thinking it's going to be answered in episode eight and nine. I never saw the answer in eight and nine. Is it in a book somewhere? Probably. Maybe she has it by coincidence. Coincidence, yeah. I mean, right? She just, she just has it. Because we don't have any backstory on Maz Kanat. As a casual fan, I don't have any backstory on Maz Kanat. So I have no idea how she enters in to the rebellion or to the universe or to the empire or anything. So who, this random character, how do they come up with lightsaber? I have no guesses. No idea. She, no just, idea. Has, she just has it. It's disappointing that some of these questions were never answered. Mm -hmm. And like this could be a big story. It could be. Yeah. Ne never addressed. Never addressed. Bummer. Well, never addressed in the main movies, as far as I can tell. At least, at least give us some like plausible way in which it could have happened. Right. Would Luke Gosh, who had who had? It's, it's Luke's saber. Luke's, yeah. And but it, we don't know who Maz Kanata is. We don't know who she is. So why would anybody trust her? Did she steal it? Did she acquire it because somebody oh, trusts wait. her? So where where did we last see this? I think this saber, the blue one, yeah, was last seen when Luke's hand got cut off in the Death Star. Right. Then it falls down there into the, but then. Oh, that was Cloud City, right? Oh, sorry, Cloud City, correct. But then somebody found it, uh, and then she has it now? Because in episode nine, uh, sorry, episode six, he has a green one. He's a green one. Right. So this is the blue one. The blue one. That falls down to that, like... Falls down, phew, gone forever, right? But I guess not. I guess not. So is she... Oh, no. Is she a Lando person? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, maybe she's maybe she's like this background power broker, and so she gets things like this because she's actually working for the rebellion. And this is one of the, this is one of the like rebellion. How do I say this? It's like a prized artifact. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like you see this and you believe in the cause, and so this is how she's recruiting people. Oh, she, I mean, th this makes sense. She is using what she's got, her like old woman wisdom feel. She's mm -hmm. got all these artifacts and she like reads people and it's like, if you see the uh, this artifact, you're going to feel like you should join up. 
She also has money yeah. involved if there's uh, smugglers and stuff. Mm-hmm. She, she has like a, a bunch of stuff back here. And whatever whatever somebody fixates on, she's like, ah, yeah, that thing is from the rebel yeah. cause. And you should yeah. join the rebel cause. It's yeah. calling to you. It's calling to you. Like, eh, it's kind of the first thing I saw in the room. Like, it's calling to you. <laughs> I could see it. Okay. Uh, we see through her lies. I'm actually happier with that explanation than having an actual explanation. <laughs> okay, so leaving that planet, um, mm-hmm. Finn picks up the saber the first time. And he gets in a fight with TR Adar. They need you now. Go. Ooh, when I saw this in theaters, I was mm. like, "Is he going to be? Is he the Jedi? Is he? Or maybe there's going to be two Jedi?" Oh, so excited! I was excited. Too. Raider. This guy. This guy. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's look at look, look at the weapon. So he's got an electrified part yep. and not electrified part. And in yep. Star Wars canon, you the People can go up against lightsaber users as long as their weapon is electrified, then it somehow bounces back. So let's watch the fight. Oh. Cool whippy thing. So aggressive. Also, and Finn is holding his own. Finn's holding his own, right? Okay, did you see it there? Did, did you see what I, happened? I never... I did not see it. Here's the fight, and particularly this swing coming up right there. There's the electrified part. The lightsaber's hitting the not electrified part. Shouldn't this slice through the weapon? Right, because in episode one, yeah, um, Darth Maul's lightsaber is split in half because it gets hit not on the lightsaber part. Exactly. So this is equivalent, right? He's getting hit on the non-electrified part, so it should get sliced in half and disabled. Should get sliced. Right here, yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. So I think we okay, have I some guess. stills that dial into the exact... Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So it's this swing, yeah, and it's right there. Yeah, it's very clear. Electrified, the part. clearly not. Clearly not. Lightsaber. Doesn't it happen a second time? Well, this is a different angle. Maybe a different angle, yeah, but same thing. Yeah, this this should just will slice right right through the trooper. Does that mean that the hilt is electrified or something? But, need- but it's not. It, it's clearly he when he extends it out that. See, you can see the electricity yeah. Yeah. and then nothing. And it's got these like pads or something on the outside that are clearly electrified. And those pads don't extend all the way to where he's holding it. Yup. Hmm. I don't have all an right. explanation. All right, that's fine. That's fine. I, I, it needs to be a one-off for me because if we can say that the whatever this material is, that whatever mm-hmm. this material can defend against lightsabers then you would just armor up everyone in that. Right, can, well, is, can Beskar block lightsabers? Oh, good point. I but they're not so. gonna make some random weapon out of Beskar, because it's right. really... Besk- rare. Really, it's really rare. Yeah. Right, right, right. All right, whatever, let yeah. it go. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's some fan theories out there about what that Ooh. was all about. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Okay, and then leaving this planet, Kylo Ren catches up with, with um, Ray. With Ray. The droid. Where is it? Okay. You've seen it. Pull the division out. Forget the droid. We have what we need. So they're uh, looking for the map, mm-hmm. and Kylo Ren's like, Ray's seen it, so let's go, let's take her. But mm-hmm. eyewitness testimony has been proven to be inconsistent. Like, mm-hmm. take the droid, take the droid and the girl, like, get them both. Right, just get them both. What are we doing? So I would imagine if it was difficult to get the droid, okay, and easy to get the girl, you take the girl, Secure and you it. still sure. you still look for the droid. Keep but looking. You, you realistic like it's probably not going to happen. But here they're on the planet. Droid is on the planet. She's on the planet. Go get it. Go get the droid. Go get What's it. The, why? Why? It doesn't make sense. Yeah. If you're like tactically in a situation where you're like, we're barely making it. We got to get out. Then yeah, get get out. Right. But like they're the. the the first order is in control of the situation. That's right. Like, is it is start, it hubris? Start. Is it hubris that Kylo's like, I don't, I, I can, I've got such a handle on the situation. I don't even yep. need the droid. So it's just straight hubris. It's it's a human. It's hubris and a lack of understanding of human memory. <laughs> yeah, I mean, his testimony mm-hmm. is proven to be inconsistent. Like, right, and even if idea, he's like, I see your brain has the map, but she doesn't necessarily remember it correctly. And the idea of corroboration. Yeah, having two sources saying the same thing. 
is yeah. more impressive than one source saying one it's, thing. It's more it's more believable. Certain. More certain. Believable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially if one of them a droid. Like I just check your memory. Just check your memory. Yeah. Also, one thing I just, just noticed now, Kylo is terrible at lightsaber duels. But his yeah. competence when it comes to like knock you out, he had no hesitation and no uncertainty about his ability to knock her out. Let's watch it again. Maybe he's good with this like mind stuff. Boom. I see. So maybe he's not a saber duelist. He's more of a force user. Yeah. That's so he possible. could do he like mind control. Actually, so like mind control manipulation of memories and stuff. He can do much better than lightsaber duels. Yeah. So if he had a a, se a second person who was good at lightsaber duels and he could be like a Professor X type. Yeah. He could be really effective. Mm hmm. So Han escapes and we see the rebel base for the first time and it's only for a little bit of time, but actually we can get a lot of statements about the culture of the rebels uh, from this mm -hmm. little bit. Yep. So first of all, these two people, these two, where, where are you running? Where are you running? Okay, we see Finn here. He just came out of the manifold. Come, these people are yeah. still running, but let's watch, like pay attention to them where they go. <laughs> What's over here? <laughs> like, where, 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 where are they running? So it looks like Okay, so okay, okay. So they gotta be running somewhere. So it looks like yeah. the concrete ends. So they're not running to okay. another place with another, like, craft. But okay. I see this little shed sort of thing, right okay. there. Right there. Maybe yeah. they're running to that shed, and that could have a whole underground situation going on. Oh. And they need, they need, they're running from their plane to a briefing room, and they're late, or something. Mm. I'm filling in blanks here, mm. but sure, to make sure, it sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So, so I guess they could also just be doing conditioning. It's possible. Like you got to stay in shape because pilots are actually so they're super fit because there's a lot mm -hmm. of like G force and stuff. But they are in their uniforms. I'm okay with that. I'm 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 actually super okay with that. Okay, let me because hear. because if they are ever attacked by the <clears throat> by the empire by by the force, what are they called? Mm -hmm. Gosh, the, tie fighters. No, 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 the entire organization. The first, first order, first order. Yeah, thank you, thank you. If they're ever attacked by the first order, and you're a pilot, you got to get in your ship fast. You don't have time to be like, oh, I'm on the south side of the base. I got to run to the north side and get my helmet. Like, I left it over there. Like, no, no, no. Just carry it with you all the time. Like, be be flight ready all the time. I see. So you're thinking there is times where they can do conditioning in, like, workout gear. But there's also times where, like, I need to be full up right now. I'm on duty. Exactly right. Exactly right. I see. And also, it's a good even, idea. Even that, if you had like a gym area, yeah. you'd like bring your bring your your flight suit and your helmet with you there. So that mm -hmm. way, if you have to get dressed right on, like right away, like get dressed. That's right. And I guess you would also want to do full up exercise because you want to be comfortable moving around in That's your right. suit. Imagine and with you get, the, with the like, helmet in the combat, and, and you're like, oh, my shoes aren't broken in. Like just breaking yeah. your shoes, <laughs> breaking your shoes. Yeah, or like. In the rush, like it's, I can't run as fast because it's awkward. So I haven't learned how to compensate. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I okay. hear that about like firemen when you first wear all the gear, they're like, oh, it's so bulky, clumsy. Mm -hmm. right? But then yeah. after you wear it all the t like frequently or all the time, then second skin. Okay. 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 I like that. That's a very mm -hmm. good explanation. Okay. There's a little bit more we can figure out from rebel 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 culture. First of all, everyone, everyone's running. <laughs> everyone, everyone, like, like, maybe maybe the, like, these three people here are walking, but everyone else, yeah. everyone's running. running. Well, when Finn starts running too, he's like, "I got to. Uh, I'm going somewhere." <laughs> I gotta run. It's like, uh, "When in Rome, oh, 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 it's cardio right now." <laughs> the other thing I noticed here is that their concrete, except for this, mm -hmm. concrete's in good condition. Like they take care of that stuff. Yeah. So landscaping too. Yeah, look at this. It's like, like, hey, so there's grass here, and it's not overgrown, and and mm -hmm. um, and like spilling into the the mm -hmm. roadway. It's it's manicured. Somebody somebody in the rebel culture is keeping this pristine. It's looking yeah. good, which actually is very important to keep the base in working order. You want stuff to be clean and clear and not messy. I can make assessments of equipment. I can move stuff around without like oh, I hit a thing of grass. Um, oh yeah. Uh, so. That actually is an indicator that some stuff's dialed in here. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. 
but then also walking on the grass, walking on the grass. and running here with vehicles. There's no like clear walking path. Like yeah. I would, I would like to have a yellow line here. That's like, this is for walking only. And then like a blue line, like mm -hmm. oh, between that's for bicycles only. Yeah. And then, and then here is like vehicles only. I'm also noticing this is sort of an operations center. So we've got maintenance and retrofitting and fighters yeah. being readied for takeoff. It's, mm -hmm. there's not a lot of space here. This is this is a tough it's tight. situation. It's tight. It's you, gotta, tight. you gotta do what you can with her when you're a rebel. But at the same time, like the first order is so organized. Plenty of space for their maintainers oh, and I their see. hangers. Just, yeah. Rebels, the rebellion needs to get this little little bit too little, scrappy. A little bit too scrappy, yeah. We got a mix of craft as well. I see different mm -hmm. types of craft. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on over here on the left, this engine. Maintenance outside. And why does Poe Dameron, I mean, he's, okay, he's cool, he's awesome, he's, he gets, he's mm -hmm. the coolest plane, but I would be so pissed if I was one of these other pilots, be like, mm -hmm. like, F that guy, <laughs> like, he gets a cool, well, he gets it all super nice, like, what can I, my explanation can I have, maybe he's the commander of an air wing, and so he gets the special plane, Okay. and then yeah, that special plane, anybody who's the commander of an air wing gets the special plane, so if you get promoted, yeah, yeah. you have the respect of your, your guys and girls, doing the right. flying so they're like yeah that's his plane and from from what i know from what i've heard about flight teams flight squadrons i guess is that um they they, they don't get like angry at the boss they like they understand like it's the boss like yeah. he's the ranking officer they get cool stuff right and i think you only get ranked up if like you're going to be a good leader which means yeah. people are going to respect the special stuff you get. You get the special stuff. They also respect that you're a good leader. It makes sense. Yeah. I see. I guess it. I've it, doesn't, never... it doesn't feel, you don't feel cheated. You don't like, yeah. I get it. He's a good pilot. He's also a good leader. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. And then if, if you become the leader, then you'll get the special plane. Right. Yeah. So. Okay. okay. But I'm I've never seen Poe lead people, but I guess he is a leader. He leads in combat in that he's like, follow me and mm -hmm. attack the thing and cover me. But I guess, mm -hmm. I guess, yeah. I guess, yeah. That's kind, of, that's kind of leading. I don't know. Also, these, uh, these two dishes in the middle, Yep, uh, they're pretty low. Why don't they put them up on the hill? Or does that yeah. not matter? Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah. I, I mean, okay, so there is a scenario where they're lined up somewhere over here, and it doesn't matter if you'd be on top or if you'd be on bottom. Um, mm -hmm. But I guess generally you would prefer reception to be your, your antenna, your satellite to be higher because then there's less obstruction. But it I is guess, possible that like they're pointing at something in space mm -hmm. and then it lines up. It's fine. I see. So if that's pointing at a geosynchronous satellite, right. it doesn't matter if it's high or low. Just you got to aim it towards Although the satellite. This, this thing is a problem. It's just, just right in the way. Just right in the way. Just annoying. Yeah. Yep. Well, maybe maybe that's a perspective thing. It's actually not in the way. Mm, uh, uh, okay, maybe. Maybe. Because we only see this from one angle, but yeah. it really does look like he's in the way. Maybe it's much farther. Those they're much farther separated than it looks because of the perspective. Yeah, I guess it could be. I really don't like that the the engine to the left is got cowlings off, is being maintained by people, and it's exposed to the elements. Wheel that thing exactly. in there. Yeah, get in there. Get in there. Are they are they so starved for space that they're like maintenance is spilling out into the concrete? Are they Athlete. so starved for power that they can't have lights inside? They got to use natural light. Yeah, that Weird. could be indicative of some problems. Oh, hey, look at all these pilots with all their helmets. That's nice. Oh, yeah. Nice. That makes sense. Yeah. Because like, if if stuff goes down, like you gotta got, gotta be ready to fight. Gotta be ready to fight. Yeah, that makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Plus, if I was a pilot, I would wear my flight suit just everywhere. <laughs> I want everyone to know that I'm a pilot. <laughs> well, don't they have like aviator jackets? Was it an Andor? What's his name? I don't remember the the main pilot guy who was talking to. Um, oh no, it was Mandalorian. In Mandalorian, the main pilot guy is talking to uh, Din Djarin, and he when he was in the bar on the beach, he had oh, didn't he have like sense. a Sorry. aviator yeah, yeah. jacket on? Yeah, yeah, the leather jacket. So one of those two. I've never taken them off. <laughs> I've never taken them off. I'm, I'm always I'm always wearing them in layers. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes double up for double prestige. Heck yeah. Okay, so on Starkiller Base, Kylo Ren is is torturing um, Rey, but he does some weird stuff. You still want to kill me? That happens when you're being hunted by a creature in a mask. Cool. Oh, that was weird. So first, okay, so I get it. Like, 
Mm-hmm. She gets him to take his mask off. He takes off his mask so that she can see mm-hmm. his face. But then he slams his helmet in this thing. So it's like a couple things. Like one, like what is this? <laughs> like why does this exist in the torture room where there's like like charred bits down here? Like what is, is it? Like the ashes of his enemies? I guess, and it's just like in an exposed bowl. Like they burn people here standing up, and then they crumble down in this. And then also like like this is your helmet. Like you got you got to put that on later. Like now you got all this ash all over it. Like that's on your face. That's on your shoulders. And people are going to think you have danger of some. And like and like if there's a screen on the inside, now it's all over there. You got to like get in there with like an alcohol wipe and like scrape. Like uh, uh, don't do this. Just sit on the floor. And it's gonna all that. So it like. There's like ash. Plumed. It plumed. It yeah, plumed, yeah. which means it's going to plume into the helmet. Yup. Yup. And you're going to get all these little gritty, ashy all things. All in your hair. And you put it on, on and you're going to be like, it's on, uh, It's not like uh, I can still use the helmet, but this is. Clog would, up your pores. It would be uncomfortable. You want that clean. No good. No good. What are you doing, Kylo Ren? You can put this, else, you can put this anywhere else. Maybe he likes it dirty. Oh, Just, gross. He wants, if this is the, the ashes of his enemies that he's tortured in the past, he likes feeling the grit on his skin. Reminds him of how powerful he is. He like keeps keeps the ashes in this room, and he comes here once a day. Slam, right? Slam. Start my day. You know the coffee. Mm-hmm. Start my coffee. day. Ashes and coffee start the day. It's so weird. Uh-huh. Why does this exist? I, I I don't get it. But sure. But, but why? Why, but just, why would you do this? Why? Well, okay, okay. But so let's say something is a little uncomfortable, but it gives you an ego boost. Okay. Throughout the day, so you could the grit is uncomfortable, but when you okay. think of the grit, you're like, "Oh, I'm powerful." That's right. Maybe he likes that because it reminds him of his power yeah, to torture. It. And I'm making I'm making it up right now. Yeah, like I got like a, a Grammy. I got a Grammy, and like I made a necklace out of it. And yeah, it does give me back problems. But like, oh man, I got a reminder. I got a Grammy every day. That's exactly right. That's the same thing, right? The back problems are not as important as that feeling. I, I mean, I said it like a joke, but actually it makes sense. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. I carry my I mean, diplomas with me everywhere I go. When, when we have fashion in the real world, it's all entirely practical. We have no impractical clothing to help us feel better. That's false. We have impractical clothing that's, that's right. tight and constricted, but gives us confidence. That's right. Right. I would like, yep, going on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so to get out of the torture room, Ray does force abilities, but how did she know how to do this? You will remove these restraints and leave this cell with the door open. What? Remove this restraint, leave door open. What? You will remove these restraints and leave this cell with the door open. I will remove these restraints and leave the cell with the door open. Okay. And you'll drop your weapon. Okay, super cool, super perfect, super clutch, exactly what she needed in the moment. Excellent. And it's not like it's not like some acrobatic thing that she wouldn't mm-hmm. even learn. Like it's, it's just it's just force manipulation or force mm-hmm. willpower. I forget what it's called. But how did she even know that this was an option to use? Right. Like she didn't go to the Jedi Academy where they would teach these things. Like, how does she even know to do this? Like, right. So you imagine somebody who's force sensitive has potential in the force. They are aware of the force. They have all these like special abilities that they can't really control, but they need this training to like hone mm-hmm. it in and yeah, actually figure it. out yeah, all of the possibilities of the force. She seems to be able to do this very specific thing and to think to just, know to do it with naturally, very, like naturally. It's very specific. Yeah. Like so, if you, if you live, let's say it like this, like if you, if everyone around you could jump two feet in the air, and you had this like latent ability to jump 50 feet in the air, like you wouldn't even think that it's an option because everything around you tells you it's not an option. So if she's okay. like living in Jakku and nobody's doing like, oh, mind control, mind control, she's like, where do you even get the concept of I could control somebody's mind? That's right. The only yeah. way I could make it make sense is that like a video game character, like you get to choose your starting skill sets, right? Like you get to, you know, you, like, like I'm going to put my, my points into this, into strength. I'm going to get my points into pickpocketing. Like for her, she, this is her starter skill. Her starter skill is she for free gets mind control. Okay. But she gets so many things for free. She gets mechanic. She gets yep. pilot. Yep. She gets force user. Yeah. Like dialed in force user. This isn't, she's got so many starting skills. It's, that's very baby. She's overpowered. Her, her, her special ability is good at stuff. 
just 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 I, we haven't even seen lightsaber dueling yet it's not like she picks right. it up and is a complete beginner it's wild she's so she, good she, at so many she things. also has charisma like leia like likes her right away han likes her right away finn oh, likes her right. right away right force, leia really force likes charisma her. yeah damn yeah so yeah how did she know this how did she know that was an option so the star killer base let's watch how is it possible to power a weapon of that size? It uses the power of the sun. As the weapon is charged, the sun is drained until it disappears. The first order, charging the weapon again now. Our system is the next target. Okay, 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 okay. let's stop that right there. So you're saying, they're saying the Rebellion did not know about Starkiller Base before it was built. They had no spies in the construction. They had no spies like in ships doing reconnaissance of first order areas. They had no intelligence apparatus. And yet... I now they know where it's targeting right now. I How do they it. know that? It was like a surprise and then existed. And then they very quickly were like, oh, yeah, this is how it works. Yeah, call, call that guy on the inside. Where are they targeting? How'd you have a guy on the inside? How are you surprised? I thought should you be... didn't know. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. If you had a guy on the inside, you should have known that it existed. Right. But you didn't know it existed. It sprung on you. And so all of a sudden you have embedded intelligence. I mean, the Star Killer Base isn't, isn't broadcasting where they're hitting next. That's right. That's right. There's no like like live web feed. Like this is where we're gonna hit next. Yeah, yeah. Please, yeah. please leave. <laughs> yeah, no. Hmm. In order for that amount of power to be contained, that base has to have some kind of thermal oscillator. There is one. How does I mean, he know that? Who the, who How the fuck does this guy? That? Like this place didn't exist in his mind like two minutes ago. Yeah, and he's like, who? Okay, first off, who is this guy? He's, he's okay. He's clearly speculating. So some like science advisor. Okay. Okay. But. Just because he said it needs a thermal oscillator, has that been vetted as what's happening? Is that the conclusion of his of his committee? Is he so knowledgeable about about the empire's what are they called? The first first order. The first is he order. so knowledgeable about the first order's science and engineering that he can be like the only way that this could work? They must be using this tech. Must be using this tech. And then I mean, he doesn't run it by his team. He just ostensibly the first order has their own scientific tree that they're exploring. And yeah. how would he know like what they have available to them? Like, it could be lots of stuff. Right. So this is this is again. So they have massive in intelligence failures about not knowing about Star Killer Base. Yep. But then massive intelligence wins where they're like, oh, if they do build Star Killer Base, this is how they'll do it. Must be this. Must be this. Dialed it in. Got it. Yeah. Do I need to ask my team and run it through? Confirm. Run it by people? No, no, no. no. I know. This. And then, Man, and everybody in the room's like, oh, okay, yeah, oh, it's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then Finn is a janitor. He's just a lowly yeah. stormtrooper. Yeah. Why would he know about the inner workings of Starkiller Base? Do they not have That's compartmentalized right. information at the First Order? That's right. So I guess what should the, the First Order do? They should, they need janitors to clean stuff up. Mm -hmm. But you would you would you would localize janitors like you you use you work at A wing, you work at E wing. So that way, yeah. no janitor knows everything. And then also, you would have like. Secret, critical areas would be secret they would be top secret like right. you're not allowed to clean there at all like droids only or something something like that so, something yeah or or a janitor is not allowed to leave the base ever yeah and so plus they were not going to train him on how star killer base works so it should be hard for him to get engineering and details about star killer right. base even if he wanted to so he's some type of janitor yet engineering savant this is like a like a goodwill hunting <laughs> thing right, right? Like, yeah. like i just cleaned the room but actually i know exactly what's going yeah. on here i watched it fired that one day and i was able to put together mm. how it worked with no training in science or engineering <laughs> a planet scale know. operation happened and i pieced together the, yep. everything <laughs> it's too much mm -hmm. it's too much somehow he knows and a thermal oscillator there is one precinct 47 here Confident, though. Yeah, Confident. Respect it. How would he know that stuff? Crazy. Okay, and then this is... Uh, so Ray has escaped using force powers. And then this stormtrooper comes up to Kylo Ren. It gives him an update. And he gives her a talk. And she would be like, uh, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sir, sensors triggered in Hangar 718. We're searching the area. She's just beginning to test her powers. The longer it takes to find her, the more dangerous she becomes. <laughs> It's like I'm the sensor officer. What are you? What are you talking about? Who? What? Who? Like, what? Uh, like my manager told me to give you the message. I don't know what the message is about, but here's the message. <laughs> and Kylo Ren's like, like, oh, she's feeling her force powers coming. Like, what? Like, uh, who? She's like, who, who are you who? talking about? <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> but at the same who? time, like, you're a lowly trooper. Like, what do you say when Kylo Ren says that? You, you, you look at him and you shut up. You look at him, shut up, and let him go about his business. But you're like, yes, sir. Leave. Yes. <laughs> Let him say his. Let him say his thing. But I don't know what he's talking about. Okay. 
but okay yeah sure so in the break room you know later that day well they all die but if there was a break room later they'd be like kylo came up to me and said this thing he said this thing i don't know what it was is there another force user what's going on here what i thought it was just him like i was just yeah i like and the rumor mill starts because they go because because kylo let sensitive information slip he did yeah he let it slip Mm. Mm -mm. Mm. oh gosh so the millennium falcon is at light speed they do a manual light speed turn off right at the surface of the star killer base how what let's watch we're making our landing approach at light speed and and what are we doing The Millennium Falcon just takes a beat. Takes a beating. This is a spaceship. This is a spaceship. Spaceships are fragile. They need to be able to withstand like space, <laughs> the vacuum, right? Which means right. they need to be like tight. They need to be tight. You can't be taking damage like this. And you know, things break just with routine maintenance. This thing has been taking a beating left Ooh. and right. Also, was it necessary? Like, like they say that you, that you can't go into Stargill Base without being above uh, above light speed, but. It's also within Han's personality. Like it, it is Han type of thing to do, like to push it right to the edge to mess with people. So I agree, I agree that he likes to push it right to the edge to mess with people. But I just, yeah. I, a human cannot time that out because, yeah. like, even if he gets it right within some error bars with manual control, the precision with which he would need to dial the throttle in just, you know, to turn light speed off, mm-hmm. he doesn't have the timing. You know, we're talking, you know, 50, 100 milliseconds for human reaction times and movement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is way too large of a if, delta if, T. If he brings the throttle down too early, he slams into the shield. If he brings the throttle down too late, he hits the mountain. And he's not Ray. Like, he doesn't know how to fly the Millennium Falcon as good as her. Perfectly. Yeah. So, like, really, she should have been the pilot. Oh, I guess she's captured at this point. But this is also a timing thing. Like, if you're a millisecond off either direction, right. I think you're in real trouble. You're in the planet. You're either in the planet or far above the planet. And then you, if you're far above the planet, you hit the shield, you die. You die. So I think it should have been like, we're, we're, gonna, we're doing it. We're going to the surface. But the computer would control the yep. precision of yep. when you'd come out of light speed. Maybe it was all for show. The computer's actually controlling in the background. He's just messing with Finn. Maybe, maybe Han's <laughs> throttle is always fake. And it's actually Chewy in the co-pilot seat doing the actual flight. He's got like a foot, it's like a foot throttle. And Chewie's yeah. like, oh, okay. It's like that elevator button. Chewie's giving him, a, you know, thinking he's in command, but he's actually doing nothing. <laughs> uh, yeah, the closed door button that actually does nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Momentum. Let's check out this uh, blaster. Chewie's blaster. If I get the name of the weapon, the green crossbow thing. Uh, yeah, the momentum. The bowcaster. The, bow the momentum here doesn't seem to make any sense. Let's watch. Hey. Wow. So if you look fine. how much. Wait, wait, wait. How, that, seems, that seems fine. So you're saying, yeah, the laser comes in and it has all this momentum and then it blasts yeah. the guy. So my issue is not with that. So the, the laser beam from the bowcaster has a ton of momentum and is able to knock this guy across the room. Okay, yeah. I'm fine with that. But then okay. the recoil Chewie should feel should be enormous. Oh, oh okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying. You're saying, yeah, okay. yeah. So yeah. for all this momentum to come out here, then there should be equal and opposite momentum generated against mm-hmm. Chewie. Yep. But here, Chewie, Chewie just shoots it. Not a problem. Not a problem. Like you're saying that he should Chewie should equally get blasted back. Yeah. So he's Chewie's yeah. probably bigger and heavier, but this is such a momentum transfer into the trooper that Chewie isn't the feet of Chewie is not going to be able to overcome that momentum transfer. Right. He's going to be thrown backwards. So if this guy's thrown back 20 feet, I think Chewie would be thrown back 10 feet because of the difference in mass. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. There are so, things you can do like lining up your body to try to put as much force mm-hmm. into the ground, but it really would be like trying to shoot a, I mean, you, the blast of the guy. Like I don't know what what type of caliber actually a bullet like makes a person fly backwards like that. We're right. talking about like a cannon or some shit. Like, yeah, and you can't and, shoulder mount a cannon. Like, right, and I don't see Chewie in some sort of brace position where he takes like a just huge standing. load. He just he just sort of fires. In fact, it they and were relaxed. surprised when the door had opened, and then there was a guard right there. Yeah, so he he would not have been ready. So momentum problems. Yeah, weird weird you're right yeah totally right yeah Boom. not a problem not a problem these screenshots are from the rebel base during the star killer base attack mm-hmm. can we figure out what these maps are telling us 
So like I see a circular thing in the middle. Is that that must be Star Killer Base? But there's a lot of circles and a lot of dotted line circles. Gosh, I have no idea. I okay, looking at this, this feels to me like a star system. Okay. And here's our orbits, different orbits for different planets, maybe. Okay, okay, I like that. So this is more of like an overview picture. Where are the assets solar system wide? Maybe. And if I need to move assets around within the solar system, I can do it. But I don't get the details of each each op, each uh, skirmish or whatever. Right. I mean, but but equally, this could also be galaxy wide. I don't. I really have no clues. That would seem too zoomed out for this. Unless they're bringing in supplies from outside the star system. Like they they have supplies and ships outside the star system. During the fight? I think this is during during the fight. Hmm. Because I could imagine this being galaxy wide if they're like, we have troops here, troops here, troops here. Where do we pull them in? But if this is during the fight, then that stuff should have been done already. (laughs) Right. That's like that's like strategy meetings, tactical and logistics meetings weeks before. So I, this, I like the idea that this is the star system and maybe yes. the greens are the rebel forces. And this person is comms on like, hey, move from this position to that position mm, and attack yeah, this. Yeah. So they're doing their sorties out here, but they're like, yeah. there's a weakness over here. Please move your squadron. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. But they don't, like she doesn't know the details of what each squadron is doing at that moment. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so there's another one. This is also during the battle. So Star Killer Base, I think, must be in the center. Yeah, right there. That this must thing? be Star Killer Base. Okay, I buy so, that. So then there's these dotted lines emanating from Star Killer Base. Ooh, the are walls. these the planets that it's targeting? Ooh, that could be the planets. And here's targeting. like the, the split of like the lasers. Yeah, yeah, I like I that. I guess, but uh, I guess it could also be here are squadrons going in. Could be. That's also possible. So this is like this could possibly be the Star Killer Base overview, but not the Solar System overview. Mm. So this guy is like laser focused on star killer status and positioning. Uh, so you're saying like when these assets move in close, then they will jump onto the screen and then join yeah. the combat and join okay. this combat. And then he takes over as like moving them around locally. Cool. Okay. Okay. Starting it's to get some insight. Very nicely organized. Yeah. And he's on comms. So they have probably different levels of comms. So then they probably have squadron level comms. And that's exactly right. Cause, cause people in the fight don't need to know about what ships are doing out here. Right, right. Like this person gets the ships into the into the solar system, and then and then hands them off to this guy, and his yeah. guy coordinates actual combat. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Co- we co- don't see any oh other screens. I don't think I didn't see any others, but kind of interesting. Yeah. Okay. First order. They're super evil. They're super bad. But stuff goes bad in their their laser system, and it still works. So sabotage. The oscillator has been damaged, but is still functional. Admiral, their weapon will fire in two minutes. That's great. That's great. There's so much destruction yeah. here, but yeah. the Star Killer base is still functional, and it's still it's still like not only is it fun- functional that we're gonna like repair mm-hmm. for it's gonna be down twenty minutes. Like no, it's still ready to fire. That would worry me as a, re- a rebel right now because they said you take out the thermal oscillator, and. It take it out doesn't do anything. Take it out. And you take out a part of the thermal oscillator. You think, okay, it's going to go down. And now it doesn't. You're thinking, how redundant is this system? How much more and do also, we need to destroy? I, that that, or I did not understand how this thing's worked. We may have attacked something that was not important. We don't know how oh. this thing works. What do we attack? Right. Now I'm panicking. Maybe yeah. a little bit. Oh, heck cause, yeah. Because I'm thinking, do I take out more of the thermal oscillator? Or do I? But, is it time to say pull out? Maybe that's not important. Pull out. Because you might be like, pull out. We need to regroup because this this is, this doesn't work. And too many risks at this point. Yeah, we're not going to sacrifice all these lives for a guess. Imagine if you were like, I'm gonna take out the Eiffel Tower, and you're like, I see the four legs, and you take one out, and, you're, and it's totally fine. You totally take totally another fine. one out, it's totally fine. Like totally fine. You'd be that's like, that's a high quality, high quality engineering. Yeah. At that point, you're like, I don't understand how this thing works. It's levitating on two legs. Like, what? I need to. Re- I need to retreat immediately. This is. I way do not too much. have the abilities to do anything with this. Like, time to yeah. time to go. <laughs> time to go. Yeah. But first order engineering, top notch. I mean, redundancies top-notch. left and right. right. That's a huge. They can explosion. suffer this huge amount of damage, and it's still operational. Not a problem. Right. Not a problem. Incredible. Incredible. Are they the bad guys? Yeah, they're the bad guys. They took out those planets. So I think Finn, I think his special ability is weapons master. Let's mm-hmm. let's 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 justify it. Traitor! Oh, 
That lightsaber belongs to me. Oop. Come get it. Ooh, I want trash talk. I like it. Yeah, he's an amateur. Yeah. He's an amateur, and Kylo Ren was trained by Luke in lightsaber stuff. Like, yep. Kylo Ren should just be no problem, just just handling handling um, Finn. Right. Even if Finn is really strong, he should still be handling. He's so trained. Yeah. He's got so much more training. Sword fights are not about swinging as hard as you can. Like, even even cutting down a tree with an axe, it's not just about swinging as hard as you can. Like, there's lots of technique. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, Kylo's winning. Yeah. Most but it shouldn't be so close. It should be. It should be. I guess it scores a hit. It scores a hit. So and Finn then there. loses. Finn correctly yeah, loses. But, but he did really well. And so... Yeah. I so when I watched this the first time, I was like, I really, I really want Finn to be force sensitive, and mm -hmm. maybe that's why he has excellent saber skills. Yeah. But you still got to learn how to saber fight. So, so the only yeah. way I can make this make sense is that he's good at hand blasters. Yeah. And he hopped in the Tie Fighter, and yeah. he hopped in the Millennium Falcon, and yeah. he's immediately good at those blasters. Mm -hmm. He picks up a lightsaber, and he's immediately good. I think his special ability is just weapons master. Like so he's just good with weapons. So even if it's blasters or swords, but he's disparate weapons, doesn't matter. Yeah, he's good at weapons. Yeah. He's got a plus five to weapon handling. He, he's just anything weapons. He's like, mm, okay, yeah, I feel, I feel, I get it. Okay, okay, okay. And then you end a fight. And it's not like if somebody's seven foot tall, they're like, are you good at basketball? Well, I have a lot of potential to be good at basketball. But I still need to train. He's like seven foot tall and like came out the womb pre-trained. Okay, the <laughs> <laughs> okay, the analogy is here, it's like someone is a juggler, so they're very good at hand-eye coordination. They mm -hmm. may not be super knowledgeable about baseball, but they're going to catch it. They're going to catch it every time because they have very transferable skill. Yeah, And so they're just good at catching things. Now, in this case, that mm -hmm. good at catching things for Finn is I'm good at weapons. Okay, okay. So like, there's some he, transferable skill. He may not be skill. good at, I don't know, math or cooking or whatever like that's not where he put his stat points he put his stat points into i know how to handle weapons how to handle weapons and in rpgs though there's often like a long range weapon situation yeah. and then a sword situation we're saying he gets all weapons swords and blasters yes and, but he doesn't, and ships but he doesn't, weapons but then but then he doesn't get things like agility or cardio or uh health regen yeah all right i mean yeah, yeah okay yeah he put he, he put all of his hit, weapon, he puts all of his points into in fact he gets one hit and he gets down uh, <laughs> he put all of his stat points into attack stuff okay i got and, it and okay. particularly like handling handling weapons so during the character selection screen the player oh, here, maxed here out the weapons but he can't fly planes right cannot but ray can super fly and and poe can super fly and han can super fly but but po, uh, but finn no flight no, no stats flight. points None. yeah he's, he's probably like uh below yeah, he hasn't even, he he hasn't gets, even he gone from zero to one yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, he, so. if he tries to fly something, it's a guaranteed crash. So if he tries to, Wait. if he clicks on the, the yeah. pilot seat, it won't even let him in the pilot seat. That's right. You don't have, the, you don't have that, the levels to, to sit in the seat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this is the only way I can make sense that he's so mm -hmm. good at lightsabers, even though Kylo Ren is yeah. trained in the Jedi arts of stabby with lightsabers. Yeah. And then like Finn holding his own, even for a little bit, it really should not have happened. Right. Unless... He's just weapon skills. Also, the other part is Kylo doesn't kill him. So if Kylo couldn't hold, couldn't take care of him right away, then Kylo would make the assessment. This guy with a no training level is holding his own. This guy's a threat. Right. And he takes right. him down, doesn't kill him. He would kill him right away. You're, you're saying like if Kylo was so good, that's when you can play with your prey. But if right. you're if you're like getting in a, a fight that's taking longer than you think it should, then like oh wait wait I need to reassess. This is an actual serious fight. I need to get serious. I need to go for the kill now. Right. That's what you're saying. So so when he wins, he doesn't want the threat of Finn, so he kills him. And he's right. not going to hesitate. Because he hesitates when he kills his father, but he doesn't hesitate. He shouldn't hesitate when he kills Finn. He's never met the person. He should hesitate when he goes after Ray because Snoke wants her. That's but right. Finn, you're a random dude. You're a random. You're a random trooper that's a traitor. Like I should have. I have yeah. no problem killing you. Right. That's just a quick stab. Bam. Boop. Done. Doop doop doop. Dead. Done. Easy. Unless Finn has weapons, because I I don't know how else to make it make sense. Mm. 
Yeah, so this is not a problem. Let's watch this. Supreme Leader, the fuel cells have ruptured. The collapse of the planet has begun. Leave the base at once and come to me with Kylo Ren. It is time to complete his training. So how powerful is the First Order? So they've built Starkiller base, massive base, many times larger than the yeah. Death Star, more powerful than the Death Star, engineering for days, logistics, supplies. I mean, this is a huge investment of resources to build this thing. And then when Hux comes in and says, hey, we're losing Starkiller base, Snoke's nonchalant about it, whatever. You know, we got we to worry about Kylo's training. Like, even if that is important, this is a... Do they have like 10 star killer bases ready to roll? That's right. That's right. It's it's a big loss, even if it's not a force loss, just in terms of raw power. This is a huge loss. And yeah, he's whatever. Snoke's whatever. like he, he doesn't even acknowledge it. He's like, hmm, bring bring Kylo here. <laughs> like, like, yeah. So this is a huge, like it's a huge loss for rebel intelligence. Because this means the industrial capacity of the first order is so enormous that the loss of Star Killer Base is not a big deal. Right. Snoke doesn't even care about it. He's like, yeah, I'm, I've already moved on. Already moved on. Yeah. I've got resources for days over here. This is a 1% loss for us. Sure. We tried Starkiller Base. Didn't work. It's okay. And the Rebellion knows nothing about it. This is also a huge loss for Hux. Because <laughs> Hux's <laughs> career is like building up Starkiller Base. And he's like, Starkiller Base, it's going down. We're losing it. And Snoke's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> like, like, what does that mean for Hux's job? He's like, yeah. oh, oh, the boss didn't care this didn't whole time. Didn't care. Oh, I've been I've been working so hard on this. I wanted I wanted to get in good with the boss, and he's got like twenty other projects with people like me rolling right now. Oh, I oh. thought I was important. Thought I was number one. Oh, oh, bummer. Brutal loss for Hux. Yeah, he should turn to the rebels now. Actually, right? Yeah. right? Yeah. Boss doesn't take me seriously. I'm a rebel. Boss doesn't take me seriously. Yeah. Oof. Okay, your emotional recovery. So this is after Han has been killed by Kylo Ren. Fantastic drama, but been really painful. Really, what should be painful? Hey, battle's over. There's, yep. there's Shuey. You got a heartbeat. Yep. And he walks somewhere. Okay. And here, here here's Leia, and here's Chewie, yeah. and yeah. Han Solo just died. I feel like uh, one of them should be comforting somebody. God, this, this is. They just walk right past each other. This is the worst part of the movie for me in emotional sense. Okay, yeah, where sure. Leia and Chewie have this huge history together, decades long. Decades. He, Wookie, uh, Chewie's best friend is Han, who's married mm -hmm. or was married to Princess Leia. So they have this decades long family connection, war connection. They, they've been Con through some traumatic stuff. They're bonding. Together. And they, they lose the, per the most important person in each of their lives. And so they have this person that they're both super sad about so to, they need which to whom they're connected to each other through right so they need to connect they would be comforting each other reminiscing about han you know all of those going through the stages of grief together like and then leia ignores chewy yeah i mean i mean, I mean just, what? who is the appropriate person to tell leia about han and yeah yeah she has force sensitivity she could feel it but like of everyone here the responsibility and honor, in, in a sense, would be Chewie's to Chewie. tell her that it happened, that that Han died. And but then they walk, they walk past each other. And Leia could, Leia would probably know Chewie so well, she could look at Chewie, and then know that he needs he needs help. Well, just they both like like they Leia could look at oh, Chewie, and the and the moment would be like we lost Han. We lost then him. who else? Yeah. Who else are they gonna? Who else are they gonna approach? They've That's both right. lost the most important person in their life. What? But what happens? What happens? <laughs> uh, Leia and Ray do the knowing look. But why? They don't even why? know each other. They met each other like half an hour. And then here's Chewie suffering by himself. And then in a week or so, because because uh, Finn's still in a coma. Chewie's good. Chewie, Chewie's he's che back to flight ready. Chewie's got to be checked out. He's just like. He's just like, that emotion, shove it, shove it down. Get back in the game, because there's no way. <laughs> no way. And look, look I mean, I, I'm not familiar with Wookiees, but yeah. it looks like a smile, like a little bit, a little bit of smile. I, I'm, okay, as you're going through grief, you're allowed to have moments of happiness. That's fair, if, that's fair, that's yeah. fair. Yeah, he's yeah. allowed to, 
But uh, but you're definitely not flight ready. Yeah, you need more time. You need, you need a psyche eval. And not only does is Chewie just lost his best friend for life. He gets rejected by one of the most important people in his life, Leia. Leia. He's like, oh, she really didn't give a shit about me. Oh, we were just friends because of Han. You were oh. you were hooking up with my best friend. And I thought you cared, and... but as soon as he dies, you you just but complete, symmetrically, I don't exist. But, but symmetrically, right? Because he because he also walks past her. He Chewie also walks past Leia. So he's like, oh, my best friend's dead. Like I'm done with you. Like, <laughs> we're good. <laughs> Why do I? But Leia is a leader. True, and she's supposed Chewie to. Chewie be... is the sidekick. That's right, because he's like a warrior best buddy mm-hmm. guy and she's like this she's like this emotionally aware sensitive yeah leader with, with, with the pulse on the rebellion that's right a repulse on her people so i, I kind of hold her to a higher standard maybe that's unfair no no no, no that, that's super right because leaders are not just le- like not just strategic not just logistical but you need to be connected to your people so that way they feel supported by you otherwise they're mm-hmm. not going to follow you mm-hmm and we also we look at Chewie right here. We don't see his face. He could be right. like looking at Leia right now, and like assessing. She's looking past him. And she's just looking straight past him, like he doesn't exist. At the new girl. At the new girl. And so he just sort of slinks away. Yeah. Brutal. Oh gosh, what if he's trying to connect to her, but she doesn't care about? She's just looking past, him and he's like, "Okay, yeah. then I'm, okay. I'll go to somewhere by myself. By myself. Hang out with R two D two because he feels things." More than Leia. More than <sighs> Leia. Well, I mean, well, well, she do, she doesn't connect with him. Like, so cool. weird, so weird. Yeah, <sighs> so sad. And then at the very end of the ship, at the very end of the show, R two D two, he just woke up from his self imposed coma, so to speak. Yeah. And, and um, he they fly to the planet where Luke is hiding, and he stays with the ship. Yeah, okay. Yep, so this Mine. planet, they go down, oceans, yeah. archipelagos. Yep. Razor the controls, yeah. showing off. Showing off. And, yeah, I mean, R2, Luke, Luke, Luke is here. You've been looking for Luke for a long time, and Luke was your buddy for, for so long. And <coughs> and R2-D2 stays with the ship. Yeah, he'd be so excited to see him. All right. He would be so excited to reconnect. But maybe yeah. maybe he's too traumatized. Maybe he's like he abandoned me. I'm just I'm not ready to go up there just yet. I can't. I'm here, but I, I need a second. I I flew across the galaxy to where you've been hiding, but I'm gonna hang out down here with Chewie. But I'm, okay, okay, I'm filling in some blanks here. Let's say somebody abandoned you. Okay. Okay, and then you you spend a lot of time trying to find them again. You've gone into a melancholy state. You finally get. We're about to walk up to their front door. And you need a second in the car to be like, I'm here, but am I ready? Ooh, right? Okay, and but there is a, can... there, that's the point of no return. You could turn around at that point and say, I don't want to see him. So there's a moment will, of decision. I, I will give you a caveat to that, is that Luke left R2-D2 with the map to how to find him. That's true. Oh, so R2-D2 wasn't abandoned. Luke gave him the map. He's like, this is where I'm going. I need to go spend some time by myself, but this is where yeah. I am. I'm not abandoning you. Actually, you can shut down for a while. So I win. Yeah, just chill. Just hang out at home. Just shut yeah. down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, weird. Okay, okay. Weird. But so, but the fan theory for this is okay. that the last time R2-D2, like R2-D2, people would tell him like, stay with the ship, stay with the ship, and he would ignore it all the time. Super cool, super yeah. cool. That's his personality. Mm-hmm. But then, then the last time when he didn't stay with the ship, but the last time, wait, wait, is when is when Anakin went out and then okay. got his arms cut off and his legs cut off by by Obi Wan. So from then from then after, he stays with the ship. Ah, uh, so Luke would know he's going to stay with the ship. So our their routine is now, if Luke wants to see him, go to the ship. Go to the ship. Yeah. And so R two T two is not going to leave his post. Right, because he's actually emotionally traumatized. Like last time I uh, left the ship, my master, my, my 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 dad effectively, like. Got dismembered, fell to the dark side. Oh, okay, okay. 
I like so that. So R2D2 needs to stay with the ship so that Luke doesn't follow the dark side. Oh, my heartbreaking. Yeah. And also, so Ray doesn't side. follow to the dark side. He's got a he wants outcomes to be good, so he's got to stay with the ship. Stay with the ship. Stay with the ship. When when I don't stay with the ship, stuff goes bad. Whole galaxy falls apart. Okay, I like that theory. That's a good oh, fan theory. Little R two D two, so much he's weight on his shoulders. He's a complex little droid. He is. This is also the end of the movie. Um, how do engines in Star Wars work? Because there's some backblast here that should be taking these people out. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, so yeah, yeah. If the, if the ship is getting pushed forward, then there must be something pushing back, which is from these engines. It yeah. should be just, just jet wash, just blasting these people. So if it's a large amount of mass that could be moving slowly, that's going to blast into people. If it's a uh, small amount of mass, it's got to be moving fast. Yeah. In which case... Small, you, you mean like gas particles that are blasting back. Yeah, or like electrons or something, because if it's an yeah. ion drive or something, which means you've got charged particles blasting into these people. That's they, all die, they all die of cancer in six months. Like you can, get, you can die much faster depending on the intensity of the charged particles. Yeah. So I don't know how engines work in Star Wars. This doesn't seem to be dangerous. Nobody seems to care. To Weird, but it's enough thrust to get this ship off planet. Yep, <laughs> like it should be a lot. It should be a lot. It's a massive ship. Okay, okay. You've okay. ever seen those videos of like the? It's like somewhere, and I think it's South America, maybe Mexico. Yeah. No, it's it's where, uh, Saint Martin. It's Saint an Martin. Island. Where's Saint Martin? Yeah. I don't know. It's in the Caribbean, I think. Caribbean. Yeah. So like, there's a very small island. So then the runway yeah. is like right up to the beach, and there's like a chain link fence, yeah. and people will like grab on the chain link fence and like try to hold on to it, and the yeah. jet just blasts them off. Yeah. And that's far away. This is this is like right in their faces. Right in their faces. Yeah. Right. And no no effect. No effect. So Star Wars engines are somehow able to provide huge amounts of thrust without any backblast. Incredible. Physics defying. Physics defying. Yeah. But okay. So that was Star Wars 7 The Force Awakens. Yep. And uh, we, we are left with some questions after this. And is Force sensitive? Is Finn Force sensitive? I I think that in the later trilogies, we find out that he was Force sensitive, but never trained. Okay. So why didn't he go to see Luke with Rey if he's Force That's sensitive? Right. If he's Force sensitive, then Luke could train them both, and then they could have yeah. a better chance together against Kylo Ren. Right. Weird. Also, it would, it would have been just super cool to have a a duo like a a not not necessarily like the masters the master pattern one but like we're both in it together we both entered our jedi times at old age so like we're figuring it out and like and like a teamwork left and right it would be super cool it would have been cool um ray and finn did have some chemistry do you it kind of felt like they were going to be a oh i definitely i definitely thought it was going to be some romantic something Mm -hmm. going on there yeah but i think if i remember uh, nothing happens just, yeah. Just, There's also just, rumors about uh, Finn and Poe having oh. some chemistry. Yeah, that never panned out that. either. Also, another also didn't yeah. happen. Uh, We're also left with the question of how did the First Order come to power? Um, do we just we just say that they did after the Empire fell? But they have ships that are very similar to the Empire. They have armor that's very similar mm-hmm. to the Empire. So did the Empire fell fall? Like, like yeah, because it's not it's not just having the ships and the equipment. You've got to man it. There's all these. Yep. maintenance all kinds but of different I guess, I guess institutional knowledge like right. you could have you could have a, a blueprint for a ship but if you don't know how to build it then then you yeah. can't build it and so that means that the people that for example make ships like you need to have them continuously employed otherwise yeah. uh yeah the information is just lost so so i think the best explanation is somehow the empire fell but it didn't crumble as an institution yeah somehow and the first order just sort of took it over i guess yeah hmm sure which also means that leia's leadership is terrible she they just won so after the battle of endor they destroyed the second death star killed the emperor killed darth vader it's all over which means it's time for the second republic time to bring the leadership who's the who's the george washington of the rebellion is leia leia yeah so she let the first order rise during a time of power right for the rebellion Who's not longer rebellion? It's the Republic now. I mean, and she's failed across the board. She should have leadership. transitioned into governorship. Yep. Like, but what is she doing being a rebel leader still? Yeah. And also, why doesn't she have more support from the planets that are fully populated? We saw that planet that yeah. got, that got destroyed by the laser, and like, why aren't those people, you know, gung ho behind the rebellion? Yeah. Uh, it so, makes me feel like the rebellion is maybe not necessarily the good guys. Like, people are okay with the first order. They actually want the first order back. They want. They don't want Leia's leadership and stability. Yeah, yeah, because otherwise she would be there. 
leading people right. in Coruscant. She didn't. Where's the? She didn't rebuild the Senate. She didn't rebuild the military. Oh, she didn't sure. rebuild finances and the economy and bring people together. First Order did that. Hmm. So, Leia, in history of Star Wars, is a failure. So she's, she's like a she's she's more like a war general. And because generals don't necessarily trans transition well right. into civil leadership. In which case, did she try to cling to power after they won and was un and unable to bring in people who are competent in governing and delegate and then step aside, and maybe take over the military? So, again, that's a failure. That's that's yeah, her own yeah, ego yep, getting in the yep. way. Or the only way she knows how to live is to be a rebel leader. And so she needs to be in combat because that's that's her thing. Right. Maybe. <sighs> Brutal takedown of Leia. Overall, still fun. Overall, still fun okay. movie. But yeah, still fun. Star Wars. Don't worry about fun. it too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll do right. episode eight next time. Yeah. See you next time. See you next time.